Taverns were drinking houses, they could be found anywhere from the largest city to the smallest country Thorpe, and the reason was simple. Drinking was an important part of medieval life. In towns, taverns were commonly owned by brewers of beer or winemakers. In places like London, the guild was able to secure a monopoly, making them the exclusive distributors of alcoholic beverages. It might surprise you that taverns weren't necessarily in one particular building run by a tavern keeper. Drinking was a popular recreational activity for both men and women, though there was often little time for recreation. Going to a tavern might simply mean going to the home of a neighbor who had recently brewed a batch of cheap ale. There might in fact be a number of neighbors along the same street with fresh brews ready for drinking. They would post a sign outside their door when it was ready, and turn their homes into temporary taverns. People from the community would show up and pay for the ale they drank while socializing with each other. Gambling with dice or cards, fights, and alcohol-related accidents were fairly common. Court records from the time described the worst of these incidents in gruesome detail. Brewing could be practiced freely by anyone, but it was typically a job for women. Even poor women could brew since not much equipment beyond a large cauldron was needed. Barley, oats, wheat, and malt were all used in ale production. It was regulated by the manorial lords only in the sense that its quality was regularly tested, and those whose who made weak or inferior ale with badly measured ingredients were fined. Sometimes those fines were waived when the brewer was exceedingly poor. In the Middle Ages, however, concerns over purity, medical recommendations, and its low prestige of water made it less favored. Alcoholic beverages were always preferred. They were seen as more nutritious and beneficial to digestion than water, with the invaluable bonus of being less prone to putrefaction due to the alcohol content. The wine was consumed daily in most of France and all over the western Mediterranean wherever grapes were cultivated. Further north it remained the preferred drink of the bourgeoisie and the nobility who could afford it, and far less common among peasants and workers. The drink of commoners in the northern parts of the continent was primarily beer or ale. Because of the difficulty of preserving this beverage for any time, especially before the introduction of hops, it was mostly consumed fresh, it was therefore cloudier and perhaps had a lower alcohol content than the typical modern equivalent. Plain milk was not consumed by adults except the poor or sick, being reserved for the very young or elderly, and then usually as buttermilk or whey. Fresh milk was overall less common than other dairy products because of the lack of technology to keep it from spoiling. Juices, as well as wines, of a multitude of fruits and berries, had been known at least since Roman antiquity and were still consumed in the Middle Ages, pomegranate, mulberry, and blackberry wines, perry, and cider which was especially popular in the north where both apples and pears were plentiful. Medieval drinks that have survived to this day include prunel from Wild Plum's modern-day Slivovitz, mulberry gin, and blackberry wine. Many variants of meat have been found in medieval recipes, with or without alcoholic content. However, the honey-based drink became less common as a table beverage towards the end of the period and was eventually relegated to medicinal use. The wine was commonly drunk and was also regarded as the most prestigious and healthy choice. According to Galen's dietetics, it was considered hot and dry but these qualities were moderated when wine was watered down. Unlike water or beer, which were considered cold and moist, consumption of wine in moderation especially red wine was, among other things, believed to aid digestion generate good blood and brighten the mood. The quality of wine differed considerably according to vintage, the type of grape, and more importantly, the number of grape pressings. The first pressing was made into the finest and most expensive wines which were reserved for the upper classes. The second and third pressings were subsequently of lower quality and alcohol content. Common folk usually had to settle for a cheap white or rose from a second or even third pressing, meaning that it could be consumed in quite generous amounts without leading to heavy intoxication. For the poorest, watered-down vinegar would often be the only available choice. Treading grapes The aging of high-quality red wine required specialized knowledge as well as expensive storage and equipment, and resulted in an even more expensive end product. Judging from the advice given in many medieval documents on how to salvage wine that bore signs of going bad, preservation must have been a widespread problem. Even if vinegar was a common ingredient, there was only so much of it that could be used. In the 14th century cookbook Le Vie and Deer there are several methods for salvaging spoiling wine, making sure that the wine barrels are always topped up or adding a mixture of dried and boiled white grape seeds with the ash of dried and burnt leaves of white wine both effective bactericides, even if the chemical processes were not understood at the time. Spiced or mulled wine was not only popular among the affluent, but was also considered especially healthy by physicians. 
The wine was believed to act as a kind of vaporizer and conduit of other foodstuffs to every part of the body, and the addition of fragrant and exotic spices would make it even more wholesome. Spiced wines were usually made by mixing an ordinary wine with an assortment of spices such as ginger, cardamom, pepper, grains of paradise, nutmeg, cloves, and sugar. These would be contained in small bags which were either steeped in wine or had liquid poured over them to produce hypocras and clare. By the 14th century, bagged spice mixes could be bought ready-made from spice merchants. Meat or honey wine is an alcoholic beverage, made from honey and water via fermentation with yeast. Its alcoholic content may range from that of a mild ale to that of a strong wine. It may be still, carbonated, or sparkling, it may be dry, semi-sweet, or sweet. Depending on local traditions and specific recipes, it may be brewed with spices, fruits, or grain mash. It may be produced by fermentation of honey with grain mash, mead may also be flavored with hops to produce a bitter, beer-like flavor. Mead is known from many sources of ancient history throughout Europe, Africa, and Asia, although archaeological evidence of it is ambiguous. Around AD 550, the brythonic speaking bard Taliesin wrote the Kanu Y Med or Song of Mead. The legendary drinking, feasting, and boasting of warriors in the Mead Hall are echoed in the Mead Hall Dine Eid in modern-day Edinburgh, and the epic poem Y Godaden, both dated around AD 700. In the old English epic poem Beowulf, the Danish warriors drank honey mead. Mead was the historical beverage par excellence and was commonly brewed by the Germanic tribes in Northern Europe. Later, taxation and regulations governing the ingredients of alcoholic beverages led to commercial mead becoming a more obscure beverage until recently. Some monasteries kept up the old traditions of mead making as a byproduct of beekeeping, especially in areas where grapes could not be grown. Mead can have a wide range of flavors, depending on the source of the honey, additives, including fruit and spices, the yeast employed during fermentation, and the aging procedure. Mead can be difficult to find commercially. Some producers have marketed white wine with added honey as mead, often spelling it made. This is closer in style to Hippocras. Blended varieties of mead may be known by either style represented. For instance, a mead made with cinnamon and apples may be referred to as either a cinnamon sicer or an apple metheglin. A mead that also contains spices, or herbs, is called a metheglin is called a melomel which was also used as a means of food preservation, keeping summer produce for the winter. A mead that is fermented with grape juice is called a payment, mold mead is a popular drink at Christmas time, where mead is flavored with spices and warmed, traditionally by having a hot poker plunged into it. Some meads retain some measure of the sweetness of the original honey, and some may even be considered as dessert wines. Drier meads are also available, and some producers offer sparkling meads. There are several faux meads, which are cheap wines with large amounts of honey added, to produce a cloyingly sweet liqueur. Historically, meats were fermented by wild yeasts and bacteria residing on the skins of the fruit or within the honey itself. Wild yeasts generally provide inconsistent results, and in modern times various brewing interests have isolated the strains now in use. Certain strains have gradually become associated with certain styles of mead. Mostly, these are strains that are also used in beer or wine production. Commercial labs have developed yeast strains specifically for mead. Mead can be distilled to a brandy or liqueur strength. A version of this called honey jack can be made by partly freezing a quantity of mead and pouring off the liquid without the ice crystals, in the same way that apple jack is made from cider. While wine was the most common table beverage in much of Europe, this was not the case in the northern regions where grapes were not cultivated. Those who could afford it drank imported wine, but even for nobility in these areas, it was common to drink beer or ale, particularly towards the end of the Middle Ages. In England, the Low Countries, Northern Germany, Poland, and Scandinavia, beer was consumed daily by people of all social classes and age groups. However, the heavy influence of Arab and Mediterranean culture on medical science particularly due to the Reconquista and the influx of Arabic texts meant that beer was often heavily disfavored. For most medieval Europeans, it was a humble brew compared with common southern drinks and cooking ingredients, such as wine, lemons, and olive oil. Even comparatively exotic products like camel's milk and gazelle meat generally received more positive attention in medical texts. Beer was just an acceptable alternative and was assigned various negative qualities. In 1256, the Sienese physician Aldo Brandino described beer in the following way, but from whichever it is made, whether from oats, barley, or wheat, it harms the head and the stomach, it causes bad breath and ruins the teeth, it fills the stomach with bad fumes, and as a result, 
anyone who drinks it along with wine becomes drunk quickly, but it does have the property of facilitating urination and makes one's flesh white and smooth. The intoxicating effect of beer was believed to last longer than that of wine, but it was also admitted that it did not create the false thirst associated with wine. Though less prominent than in the north, beer was consumed in northern France and the Italian mainland. Perhaps as a consequence of the Norman conquest and the traveling of nobles between France and England, one French variant described in the 14th century cookbook Le Minigir de Paris was called good ale most likely a direct borrowing from the English, good ale, and was made from barley and spelled, but without hops. In England, there was also the variant's posed ale, made from hot milk and cold ale, and breakout or braggot, a spiced ale prepared much like Hippocras. That hops could be used for flavoring beer had been known at least since Carolingian times, but was adopted gradually due to difficulties in establishing the appropriate proportions. Before the discovery of hops, grut, a mix of various herbs, had been used. Grut did not have the same preserving properties as hops, and the result had to be consumed quickly to avoid the inevitable spoiling. Another flavoring method was to increase the alcohol content, but this was more expensive and lent the beer the undesired characteristic of being a quick and heavy intoxicant. In the early Middle Ages beer was primarily brewed in monasteries, and on a smaller scale in individual households. By the High Middle Ages breweries in the fledgling medieval towns of northern Germany began to take over production. In England and the Low Countries, the per capita annual consumption was around 275, 300 liters, 60, 66 gallons, and it was consumed with practically every meal, low alcohol content beers for breakfast, and stronger ones later in the day. When perfected as an ingredient, hops could make beer keep for six months or more, and facilitated extensive exports. Brandy is a slightly different matter. I've had characters drink brandy in one of my novels, The Mercenary's Tale, set in 1366. It's not referred to as brandy, and it's distilled by an alchemist. Yes, what later became known as brandy wasn't a drink but a medicine. The wine was first distilled towards the end of the 13th century and was certainly being distilled on a regular and competent basis in Avignon in the 1320s. It was believed to have medicinal properties, but no one quite knew how to make the best use of it. John of Rupasissa was a Franciscan friar and an alchemist. He was a spiritual Franciscan, which meant that he embraced the ideals of poverty set out by Saint Francis. The spirituals thought that the order was moving away from its roots and wanted to return to them. In some, more powerful, quarters they were viewed almost as heretics. If you've read Umberto Eco's Name of the Rose or Stephen O'Shea's The Friar of Carcassonne, you'll know that sometimes there was very little difference between the spirituals and the heretical Cathars. By 1344 John was in prison in Avignon. The early years of the 14th century were not a good time to be a spiritual Franciscan. He was allowed to continue with his alchemical experiments, and it was probably here that he learned about distillation. He was almost certainly the first alchemist to think about alchemy in terms of health. Alchemy was originally about turning substances considered impure, such as lead, into pure substances, such as gold. John thought about how his alchemical skills could help people to live longer. Along with many others, he was expecting the Antichrist to arrive at any moment and he thought Christians would need to be in the best of health to deal with him, so he was searching for a medicine that would achieve that. In the burning water or the water of life, created by distilling wine, he found something that he thought could protect the body from illness and, for a while, aging. He thought he had discovered something different from the four elements of fire, air, water, and earth that were believed to inhabit all substances, and described it as the fifth essence of the wine. We still consider the quintessence of something to be its purest and most concentrated form. His belief that alcohol could prolong life was not without foundation. He noticed that the meat placed in the liquid didn't rot. Wine would turn into vinegar fairly quickly, but distilled wine continued unchanged for a very long time. Something that seemed to be incorruptible also appeared to be capable of sharing that property with other substances. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.